Hey fuckers, it's me, your goth mother, Madame Goth, Flower Gothic. Today is February 9th, 2020, and um, notorious Irish transphobe, Graham Lineham? Linham? Whatever, it doesn't fucking matter, he's still fucking transphobic, has posted an editorial on where else but the Daily Mail, screaming about how he's being oppressed by quote-unquote transgender extremists. For shits and giggles, I thought I would read this mess and dissect it. Doesn't that sound like fun? And I'm recording this in front of my non-binary flag because one, I actually am non-binary, deal with it, and two, this would piss off Grand even more if he happened to watch this video, which if you are, fuck you! <laughs> Also, content, content warning for obvious reasons. It's gonna be transphobic. So if you don't wanna hear me read some lame shit from a really transphobic man, then feel free to leave this video right now. Speaking out against transgender extremists has made me, has made me the most hated man on the internet, writes Father Ted creator, Graham Lineham. I'm just gonna keep mispronouncing this name because I'm there's no way in hell I'm gonna get it correct. And they have the, the same photo twice. In, in typical Daily Mail fashion. Graham Linehan has seen speaking events canceled, lawsuits filed, and police visit his home for confronting trans rights activists. Confronting is like the literally the worst way to put it. He's been outright harassing them. <laughs> Today, I am one of the most loathed figures on the internet. My speaking events have been cancelled. I have been sued. The police have visited my home and former friends have turned their backs on me. One of the most loathed figures on the internet. Let me see how many followers you have on Twitter. Oh, 609,000. Including Barack Obama for some odd godforsaken reason. <laughs> Yet. I'm the man who wrote the much-loved Father Ted, a show I have never watched, nor do I have any intent to watch. Why is it that I've become so suddenly unpopular? Because you are blatantly transphobic <laughs> in a world where that's not really acceptable. <laughs> The thought crime for which I have been tried and found guilty is that I believe biological reality exists. <laughs> yes, he believes in the biological reality that women are women and that men are men. I believe women are females. <laughs> In other news, water is wet. <laughs> I believe everyone should be able to present themselves as they wish, but that women's hard-won rights must not be compromised for the benefit of a man, of men suffering body dysphoria. Which is to say, men who feel they are stuck in the wrong body. No, 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 no. Honey, 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 honey. Have you seen anything regarding the rights of transgender individuals? Because those are much, much lower in this day and age than women's rights. Can we, can we see the little statistics here? Thank you. Most of all, I believe that gender ideology in its currently fashionable form is dangerous, incoherent nonsense. Kind of sounds like your Twitter feed, Graham. I believe trans people, those unfortunate enough to suffer body dysphoria, are having their condition exploited and trivialized by abusive, controlling, and authoritarian trans rights activists. And I think women and children are suffering because of it. I mean, I think it is like a million times more likely that transphobes are the ones that are exploiting the transgender condition than people who work to help achieve trans rights. Worst of all, I say so loudly. This makes me public enemy no one. I make my arguments forcefully because I'm concerned, sometimes with humor, because I'm a comedy writer and often while cursing. 
it, it's okay, guys. We can forgive him for all of his transphobic and hateful remarks. Because he's a comedian. That makes it okay now. <laughs> because I'm Irish. It's the humor they hate most. It's also okay because he's Irish, apparently. <laughs> what the fuck kind of justification is this? It's kryptonite to these activists. I'm 51, and I've never seen anything like the authoritarianism on display. I can think of a few instances of heavy authoritarianism in your lifetime. The desperate desire to shut down the conversation. No genuine civil rights movement advances in secret, but this one has, of one of its mantras, no debate. Because there shouldn't really be a debate on whether or not trans rights are human rights, because they are. So, well, we are in a world where male sexual offenders in bad wigs are still female prisoners. Something that has never happened before, by the way. Where rape crisis centers are defunded because they won't admit men. And where a bloke in a full beard tells school children that he's a lesbian. We're informed with venomous aggression that we may not talk about any of it. It's not that you can't talk about it, it's that you've been unbiasedly harassing transgender people on Twitter for years and people are finally calling you out on your bullshit. No debate? Oh, there's going to be a debate, all right. The popular opinion among my detractors is that I'm cherry-picking negative stories to mask a hatred of trans people. I mean, that's true. You're, like, assembling a list of gender-critical therapists in Ireland to try and prevent kids who might be trans from realizing their full identity and potential. In fact, I first came to this debate because I saw women being bullied, losing their jobs, and suffering the most intense online harassment I'd ever seen, and I wanted to stand beside them. Oh, so you're a turf. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but... Also, as a writer, I couldn't watch as one of the most important words in the English language, the word woman, was being changed against the will of those whom it defined. Just because you speak the English language doesn't mean that you are in a position of authority to... change it. Suddenly, everywhere you looked, women were being erased, insulted, or endangered. Amnesty referring to pregnant women as pregnant people. Because, you know, trans men and non-binary people can still get pregnant. You know? Did, 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 you, did you ever, like, Google that, Graham? Protections of the vagina monologues closing because they excluded women who don't have vaginas. Women's toilets disappearing from public life, even though they were introduced to ensure that women could have a public life. Uh, quite a number of public restrooms these days are unisex, and the concept of gender bathrooms is flawed in its entirety. I mean, my university still has, like, gendered bathrooms, but they also have, like, single stalls for all genders in case someone wants more privacy. Which is... An alright solution, but not the best one. Worst of all, I saw the lack of compassion or empathy for the vulnerable women who are often at the sharp end of the new gender theocracy. What? <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> the four women attacked in prison by a male sex offender in 2018, who everyone had to call Karen or they were committing a hate crime, are four women too many. What the fuck are you talking about? Let me, let me Google this. So, one case in, like, how many years? Women in prison often have a history of abuse at the hands of men. Whatever they've done, they are entitled to safety from the type of men who help put them there. Are you implying that prisons are beacons of safety? Because they aren't, you idiot. Rational people, and that includes rational trans people, are dismayed by those who have now taken over trans activism. Ah, uh, yes, all, all one rational trans activist. <gasps> I'm sorry, 
quote unquote rational. Body dysphoria is no longer seen as central or even necessary for those who decide to adopt a so-called trans identity. I mean, that's a very trans medicalist way to put transgender identities. I mean, some people don't feel dysphoric about their bodies. Some people choose not to undergo hormone replacement therapy and that's perfectly okay. To see just how elastic and meaningless the word trans has become, one only has to look at the definition adopted by the Stonewall Lobby Group. Trans people may describe themselves using one or more of a wide variety of terms, including, but not limited to, transgender, transsexual, genderqueer, genderfluid, non-binary, gender variant, cross-dresser, genderless, agender, non-gender, third-gender, bi-gender, trans man, trans woman, trans masculine, trans feminine, and neutroi. Neutroi, I discovered, literally just means androgynous. So androgynous people are trans! That'll be news to Big Off presenter Noel Fielding! Not everyone who identifies as non-binary, genderqueer, etc. also identifies as trans. For example, me. <laughs> I'm, I consider myself non-binary, but I'm not really trans. I mean, I probably want, I'm probably gonna get my breasts shrunk eventually when I have the money and resources to do so, but I'm not really conflicted over my body, if you know what I mean by that. Under Stonewall's definition, everyone is trans and no one is. A crossdresser, such as baker Philip Butts, who adopts the female persona Pippa for only a few days of every week, nonetheless receives the honor of being named by the Financial Times as one of its top 100 women in business. He's just complaining about random people now. Like, what the fuck is this? This was seen as progress, a step forward for women. In fact, it is an insult to women and for those suffering from body dysphoria. In order to maintain the fantasy that our sex is unconnected to our bodies. Sex and gender are two different things. Didn't you take, like, biology in school? The truth must be bit and beaten in the fire of academic language. That's why trans activists talk about sex being assigned at birth. Abuse of language, if I ever heard one. I mean, sex really is a sign at birth. Is the sex of a newborn a sign by a capricious midwife? Yes, of course not. Rather, it is observed and recorded as a matter of fact. A sign is one of the more successful hijackings of English achieved by gender ideologues. Yet you will hear it parroted across many organizations, from the NHS to the BBC, the sort of institution where you really would expect people to know better. Maybe perhaps it is you, Graham, who should know better. Maybe the world doesn't revolve around you? Hmm? Before I knew how toxic trans rights activism was, I wrote an episode on my channel for Sitcom The IT Crowd with a trans character. The response was more venomous than I was used to, but as bad as it was, I... at least I was allowed to write it. That was in 2013. In 2020, such an episode would never air. Because times change. I mean, back in the 1930s, blackface was seen as culturally acceptable. And that is because the first generation who didn't go out to play have grown up to become clones of Mary Whitehouse, the new Puritans. I am not new to outrage. This entire editorial is just him being outraged. There was fury on the part of some when we first released Father Ted, but the executives we had were made of strong stuff and ignored the attacks. The same goes for the IT crowd, Flash, Psy, Black Books, and I guess a few comedies I haven't worked on. I'm worried we're entering an area of pre-chewed prissy art that offends no one. No, that's not happening. Your comedic scope is not being narrowed. It's just less okay to say racist, sexist, ableist, transphobic, etc. things. It's not comedy writers who are the victim of all this. It is the women who are the real casualties. <laughs> is he trying to appeal to like women thinking like, hey, yeah, women, I, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with certain women, but not all women. Only the TERFs. Oh, won't someone think of the TERFs? Gender ideology is a disaster for women. They are expected to make room for men in their changing rooms and their safe spaces. I really don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> like, if they want to use the women's changing space and 
they identify as a woman, why the hell not? Okay, we're almost done. They're being robbed of the language to describe their reality by unintelligible academic quote-unquote gender experts, what the fuck? By teenagers encouraging each other online, by parents who are profoundly mistaken, instead of, you know, the better way to pit word it, parents who have actually done their fucking research. And like old Grammy Graham here. And by well-meaning people who, confused by the ever-changing terminology, still believe they were defending what used to be called transsexuals. All these forces working together are, whether they know it or not, providing a smokescreen for fetishists, conmen, and misogynists to pursue their own agenda. Oh no, all two of them! Ah! In years to come, we will look back at the scandal, at the ruined bodies, the confused crime statistics, the weakening of safeguarding, and the rollback of women's rights, and wonder how it was left to go on for so long. The fee for this article was donated to Women's Place, which campaigns against violence and discrimination against women. And that's the end of it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed um, Gran Linehan yelling about how transphobic he is for about, um, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ, he is a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm glad I did not grow up watching his work and therefore have no emotional attachment to him. See y'all later. Bye-bye. 小女